Hey everybody, it is Dak here from the Ed Boys, and welcome to my 1 to 99 smithing guide. In this guide, I'm going to go over all of the information that I think you need to train your smithing level. We're going to start with the quests that you can do for some smithing XP, then I'll go over the route that I would currently use to get from 1 to 99 smithing, and then afterwards we'll talk about a few alternative methods that you can use to get some smithing XP. As always, there will be chapters on your timeline to skip to any part that you might need. If you have been enjoying the guides or just getting some useful information, be sure to like and subscribe for more content. There are a couple of quests that can be used to get a solid head start for smithing XP. The Knight's Sword will give you over 12k smithing XP and is a very low level quest. This is going to jump you from 1 to 29 smithing. And then afterwards I do suggest knocking out the Sleeping Giants quest. This does require 15 smithing to do the quest, but if you did the Knight's Sword you already have that level and this is also a very low level quest. You'll get another 6k smithing XP and it'll bump you up to 33 smithing overall. There's a couple of other quests you can knock out like Elemental Workshop 1 and 2 and I have linked the wiki's page for quest XP rewards in the description for anybody who wants to send more quests for smithing XP. For my recommended route, I'll still start at level 1 for anybody who didn't want to send any quests. From 1 to 5, you can make bronze daggers at an anvil. I like this anvil in the building south of the West Varrock Bank. You do need a hammer to make any items at an anvil, and the XP that you get is based on the bars that you're using and then how many of them that you're using. So each bronze bar that you use will be 12.5 XP. This means that you don't need to switch items until you unlock an item that you uses more bars at a time. From 5 to 9, you can swap over to bronze scimitars. Then 9 to 18, you can make bronze warhammers. And 18 to 24, you can make bronze plate bodies. You could be making iron items already at these levels, but since you can only use one or two iron bars at a time so far, it is better to do these higher level bronze items for now. All these bronze items total from 1 to 24 smithing should require 572 bronze bars. At 24 smithing, you can switch to iron bars and start making iron warhammers. I would send this until level 30 to unlock steel bars. You are going to need 85 iron warhammers for these levels, in other words, 170 iron bars. At level 30 is when I would start using the Blast Furnace. I did just release an updated Blast Furnace guide that should be linked in the description. I will briefly go over how the Blast Furnace works here, but if you want even more information about the Blast Furnace, you should check out that guide. The Furnace is located in Keldegrim, which is a cave far north of Seer's Village and east of Relica. You do need to start the Giant Dwarf quest to have access to the city. To do this, you want to speak to the Dwarven Boatman here in the caves. You're going to go through a short cutscene, and then he's going to bring you into the city. You don't have to complete the quest any further to use the Blast Furnace, which is located down the stairs in this building in the eastern part of the city. Once you've started the Giant Dwarf, you can use this minecart system from the Grand Exchange for a very easy way to get to the Blast Furnace. And then there's also a minigame teleport in your grouping tab that will teleport you there. The main thing about the Blast Furnace is that you need half as much coal to make the bars, so it's very solid money making from those bars, and you can also make a ton at a time, so the XP rates are also very good too. You'll want to use the Furnace on the official Blast Furnace world so that you can pay these dwarves to run the Furnace for you. You pay the dwarves by putting money in this coffer near the bank, it will cost you 72k GP an hour. Also, while you're under 60 smithing, you do have to pay the Foreman 2.5k GP every 10 minutes to access the Furnace, which really only takes a couple seconds to do, so it's not that big of a deal. The coal bag is a very important item for using the blast furnace as well. The coal bag can hold up to 27 coal in one inventory space, so you can take up to twice as many ores per bank trip, basically doubling your speed overall. The coal bag is a reward from the motherload mine. It does take like 10 to 12 hours of motherload, depending on your mining level, but it is very worth getting the coal bag, and you'll get some ores while mining to get yourself started at the blast furnace. To make steel bars, you'll need one coal and one iron per steel bar. Make sure that you start by just putting one inventory of only coal onto the conveyor belt. That way there's some coal in the furnace the whole time. If you put iron ore onto the furnace without coal already in there, it's going to make iron bars and that's not what you want. Once you have some coal in the furnace already, you just fill your coal bag with coal and the rest of the inventory with iron. Place all of that in the conveyor belt. When the bars are made, you can take them from the dispenser, but you have to cool them down with a bucket of water first. There is a bucket and a water source by the staircase here, but also if you have the ice gloves, which are obtained from killing the ice queen, then you don't need a water bucket which does save a lot of time and will increase your GP and XP rates so I do highly suggest getting those ice gloves. Once you get the bars from the dispenser go ahead and bank them, grab more ores and just send the trip again. This does involve a lot of running so wearing the graceful outfit is going to help out with your run energy and I do suggest buying stamina potions and using them here so that you never have to stop running. It is very worth the extra cost since running is twice as fast as walking. 
You can max out at about 5k steel bars an hour at the moment, which would be about 600k GP an hour and 87k XP an hour. Even if you're just doing a fraction of this rate, maybe you don't have the coal bag yet, your ice gloves, you're just getting started so you haven't quite mastered the bank trip yet, you can still get very good GP an hour and XP an hour for how low of a requirement it is to make steel bars at the blast furnace. 30 to 40 smithing is only going to take 1,364 bars, but you can do steel bars for as many hours as you want since it is good GP and XP, so it is worth going past 40 smithing, and we are going to come back to these money-making bars pretty soon. For any level past 40, gold bars at the blast furnace is going to be your best XP per hour. These do cost money instead of making profit, so you're going to be losing GP but getting a lot more XP. You do need the goldsmith gauntlets to be able to make this viable. Wearing the goldsmith gauntlets when you make gold bars more than doubles the XP that you get, so it's basically a requirement, and you can get these gauntlets by completing the family crest quest. Gold bars could max out at a little over 400k XP an hour if you're tick perfect. I usually expect more like 3 to 320k XP an hour over multiple hours of gold bars. Level 40 to 99 is a lot of XP, so this is going to require 231,268 gold bars to get all of these levels. I prefer gold bars because you can get a lot faster XP, save some hours, and then you can go make up for that money doing other activities in those hours saved. But there are a couple of other options for smithing XP that aren't going to be costly. Instead, maybe make you some cash. We're going to stay at the blast furnace for just a minute. We already talked about steel bars, but mithril, addy, and room bars are also good XP an hour, and they're very solid profit for not that bad of a requirement. Mithril bars require 50 smithing to make. You are going to need two coal per mithril ore at the blast furnace. You can make 3k to 3.5k bars an hour at max speed, which would be like 700k GP an hour and up to 105k XP an hour. Adamant bars require 70 smithing. You're going to need three coal per adamant ore. You can make up to 2k, maybe 2.8k addy bars per hour at max pace, which is also right around 105k XP an hour and currently profits like 750k GP an hour. And then finally, we have rune bars, which for a long time, these were one of the best skilling money makers in the game. You do need 85 smithing to make rune bars, and it does require 4 coal per rune ore. You can make up to 2k rune bars an hour. 1.5k to 2k bars an hour is going to be 75k to 100k XP per hour. And at the moment, it's right around 900k GP an hour profit. If you do have any questions about the Blast Furnace or how the Blast Furnace works at all, be sure to check out my full guide, which is linked in the description. The Giant's Foundry is a nice mini game for smithing training as well. It's a little bit more interactive than regular smithing or using the Blast Furnace. Uh, just like the Blast Furnace, I do have a full Giant's Foundry guide that will be linked in the description. That's going to go over the Foundry in a lot more detail, but I will briefly discuss how it works right here. To access the Foundry, you do have to complete the Sleeping Giant's quest. During this quest, Kovac is going to give you like a demo run on how the Foundry works as well. So so as long as you're paying attention during the quest, you should probably already know how to do this. To start a commission, you have to get one from Kovac. He will give you a couple of attributes that the sword needs, like long and hard. No, I'm just I'm just kidding. Those are not any of the attributes. They're going to be more like heavy, flat, or broad. Once you're given a couple of attributes, you have to set up the mold to make a sword based off those attributes. When you first start, you're not going to have that many molds to work with or to pick from, so you can't make like the highest quality swords, but you can unlock higher tier molds as you grind out more swords. Once you have set the mold, you then need to put some bars into the crucible. There is a bank chest right next to the crucible that you can take your metals out of. The crucible needs to be filled with 28 bars. Uh, you don't have to just put bars. You can also put items that are smithed from bars for a slightly diminishing return. For example, an adamant plate body is normally a five bar item, but putting it into the crucible will give you four bars worth of metal. You also don't have to fill the crucible with just one type of metal. You can hybrid metals. In fact, you're going to get better outputs if you do hybrid, so it is best to use two different types of metal. You can only use hybrid metals that are close to each other in tier, so you could hybrid like steel and myth, myth and addy, or addy and rune, but you couldn't hybrid rune with like myth or steel or iron as those are too far apart level wise. Once you fill the crucible, you can pour it into the mold and then you need to either use a water bucket on that or just have some ice gloves on to be able to pick up the hot sword. Once you pick the big sword up, you now will see this interface at the top with three different bars. The top bar is your quality meter. This is based on what type of metal that you used and it depends on how well you set up the mold in the first place. Once the quality is set, it can only go down once you got the sword here, but it's only going to go down if you make mistakes, so that quality meter doesn't mean too much. The second bar shows you the current temperature of the sword. The sword will always be slowly cooling down over time. You can heat up the sword at the lava pool. You can just heat it up or you can right click and dunk the perform to heat it up a lot faster. And then you can cool down the sword up here at the waterfall. Again, you can just click the waterfall to cool it or you can right click and quench the perform to cool it even faster. 
The third bar is your progress bar. There's three different tools in the room to make progress on the sword. You have the trip hammer, the grindstone, and the polishing wheel. You'll know which tool that you currently have to use based on the color of your progress bar and where you're at. Red for the trip hammer, yellow for the grindstone, and green for the polishing wheel. This also indicates what temperature the sword has to be at to be able to use the tool without damaging it. Keep in mind that when you use the trip hammer or the polishing wheel, it will cool down your sword, but while you're using the grindstone, it'll actually heat your sword up. So generally, you're just gonna be heating and cooling the sword, keeping it in the correct temperature to be able to make progress out of one tool at a time. A quick tip while you're working on a tool, if the interface shows this yellow box around it, you wanna click on the tool one time to get some bonus progress while you're making the sword. When you turn in a sword, you get some smithing XP, some coins, and some reward points that you can use in Kovac's shop. In this shop, you can buy better molds to help you out with that sword quality. There's also a few other cool items in the shop. The big one here would be the Smith's outfit. Wearing this outfit is pretty convenient. It gives you a chance to, to make items one tick faster on an anvil. If you're wearing the full outfit, then it's a 100% chance to make items one tick faster. And it also gives you a chance of making extra progress while you're doing the giant's foundry, so it will speed up your foundry gains overall. The XP that you get is based on the quality of the sword that you make. Remember, this is based on the metals that you put into the sword, as well as the mold that you're setting up in the first place. Once you've unlocked the best molds, Hybrid Rune and Addy Bars can max out at like 260, 270k XP an hour, though that would require 85 smithing to be able to use Rune, of course. And then even lower tier bars, it can start off at like 50k XP an hour, but Steel and Myth Hybrids can be a little bit better XP an hour than doing Blast Furnace, other than Gold Bars at the Blast Furnace, of course. The Giant's Foundry is much more interactive than other smithing methods. It's still very solid XP, and you're gonna get a little bit of profit. So you could do the Giant's Foundry for pretty much any smithing level gains, from like 15 all the way to 99. This is a viable training method. Again, if you're looking for more details about the Foundry, I've got a full guide linked in the description. One last method that I want to shout out is Addy Plate Bodies. You do need five bars per plate body just to make them at a normal anvil. If you've completed the Song of the Elves quest, there is an anvil in Prifendos near the uh, southeast bank, which is a little bit closer than the anvil in Varrock. Addy Plate Bodies can net up to 240k XP an hour, more like 300k XP an hour if you have the Smith's outfit from Giant's Foundry. It is also profitable at the moment. It's about 10k to Alk and Adamant Plate Body, so as long as Addy Bars are under 2k apiece, which currently they're about 1800 coins apiece, Piece, then you actually profit from making these as well. At the moment, you'll push like 500k GP an hour from Addy Plate Bodies, which is actually a pretty good ratio. Over 200k XP an hour is very fast for training, and 500k GP an hour is going to give you solid GP while working your way to 99 smithing. Smithing is a pretty straightforward skill with a few different methods that can get a lot of XP an hour, and there are some solid money makers which can really help you out with cash early in your account gains. If you have any questions about smithing, be sure to let me know in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. If you enjoyed the video or you just got some useful information out of it, be sure to like and subscribe for more content. Thank you for watching and best of luck on your smithing gains.